Hello, this is Dr. Richard Cheng from Shanghai, China, updating you on the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. Uh, I have a story to tell you. Yesterday, I spent almost one hour to talking to a patient in Ground Zero in Wuhan. Uh, her mother is a 70-year-old lady with uh, many chronic diseases, including type 2 diabetes, coronary artery disease, uh, with a stent placed, and also multiple several other chronic diseases. So overall, she's in poor health. This poor lady started feeling like uh, flu-like uh, flu symptoms right to, uh, around January 20th, a couple of days before the Chinese New Year and she uh, started coming down with a low-grade fever, around 38 degrees uh, Celsius, which is very low, mild. And uh, so the whole family started taking vitamin C tablets. The lady I talked to, Niu Niu, she uh, is interested in nutrition, and she's been uh, reading upon nutrition vitamin C, so she believes in vitamin C and she bought some vitamin C tablets and she also advised her whole family. Uh, it's a family of six and uh, not living together. Basically, she and her kid, I think a daughter, and her parents and her brother and brother-in-law, six of them. And uh, they don't live together, but they get together quite often on a regular basis. And so around the January 20th-ish, uh, her mother got sick. And uh, so whole family start taking vitamin C. And uh, around that time, the family members didn't wear a mask. So in theory, they were exposed to this uh, uh, coronavirus infection. Anyway, so the mother was staying home and didn't go to hospital for about nine or 10 days. And she was fine. She, was, she didn't show much of a symptom except a low-grade fever. She was taking vitamin C every day. And her daughter, Niu Niu, was taking around 20 grams of vitamin C a day. And the other family members, something like close to it. And her mother didn't really believe her. So she was reluctantly taking half or maybe less than half of what she was advising. So anyway, uh, her uh, condition didn't really get worse, but uh, the mother wanted to have it checked out. So she went to the hospital around the, the end of January, uh, 29th or 30th. And well, there she received the official diagnosis. She got the coronavirus infection. So she was hospitalized. And uh, she stayed in the regular ward for about 10 days. And then she, over the period, over the course, she gradually uh, deteriorated. Even eventually, she was admitted to the ICU on February the 10th. That's about uh, 22 days ago. And eventually, she, uh, like I said, got worse and worse and went on the ECMO, which is the extracorporeal membrane and uh, oxygen exchange. Uh, basically, like, uh, you know, a uh, 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 forced uh, uh, extracorporeal um, lung, right? Iron lung. And uh, so, uh, Nunu insisted, insisted on the attending physician to start IV vitamin C because about this time, the first uh, official IV vitamin C trial was announced. And so she took the news report to the attending hospital, uh, physician of the hospital, and uh, insisted, please try this on my mother. And the attending doctor admitted, I mean, uh, agreed, but, uh, but reluctantly, uh, you know. And uh, she was receiving about 10 grams a day uh, in that neighborhood. And uh, uh, so the patient actually was stable and she was in the hospital for about two weeks, a little over two weeks, and was discharged from ICU to a regular ward. So she was improving, although not completely out of the woods yet. She's still in the hospital, but she is not in ICU. And during this period of time, Particularly during the ICU period of time, she was on uh, uh, she was on IVC. Uh, remember, this is a senior lady of 70, seventy-one years old with serious chronic diseases, including diabetes and heart disease. On top of that, she got a severe lung disease, and uh, you would imagine this mortality is, is very high. In Wuhan, those people with 
this coronavirus infection, the average mortality rate, but death rate is about what five percent ish, and uh, and uh, among those, I didn't see the numbers, but among those older senior people, uh, the mortality rate is way higher. But she survived so far. Uh, good luck to her and uh, and bless uh, bless her. Uh, uh, hopefully she can recover fully. The f the family is expecting her to be discharged home uh, pretty soon when her DNA or, or the nucleic acid result turned negative. Also to the story is that five members of the family, none of them got infected, including the three caretakers, basically Niu Niu and her brother and brothers uh, and a sister-in-law. Three of them. They went to the, the these three people went to the hospital, taking turn to take care of the the sick person, the sick sick mother, and uh, they were only wearing a regular mask, a layer of sing, uh, single layer of gloves, and didn't have the heavy protective clothing like the other health healthcare providers, and uh, they didn't get sick. None of them, and also the father and the younger kid, less than ten years uh, old. They were exposed to the condition because when the mother was sick, and nobody was, uh, you know, uh, taking any pre uh, preventive measure. But none of them were sick, uh, and uh, they all have been on vitamin C, and Nuni has been on it for twenty grams a day, and she really believed in it, and I believe, although this is only a case report, it again adds in the const in the context of the historical records, which is a uh, mountain high, and decades of uh, clinical cases, clinical trials research, and uh, which shows we got enough evidence to show that vitamin C is uh, is able to kill vi um, vitamin C can kill virus in the in, in the body. Why? Primarily through vitamin C's ability to to produce hydrogen peroxide. We all know hydrogen peroxide is a powerful germ killer. It kills bacteria, it kills virus. Okay, And so when the dose is high enough, it can kill virus. Or of course, for the coronavirus infection, on top of this virus killing uh, ability, vitamin C early, early, like in this case, you know, starting from the beginning, she was on vitamin C, early and sufficient amount of vitamin C not only act, acts as a viral killing uh, drug, it also is a powerful antioxidant. Why is that important? It's because we all know that the uh, coronavirus infection kills people primarily through the infection or inflammation to the lungs, causing a condition called ARDS or acute, uh, acute lung injury, AOI, and ARDS. ARDS simply means acute respiratory distress syndrome, unable to breathe. Okay? This is due to the, the very uh, 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 fi uh, violent uh, inflammation in the lungs and due to free, you know, increased uh, inflammation. And vitamin C, and in addition to other antioxidants, you know, self-defense, is able to neutralize these free radicals, these oxidants, and therefore prevent or repair, uh, 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 prevent further damage and repair the existing damage. And that's how vitamin C works. And uh, you know, on top of the other mechanisms, which we're not going to talk in detail. Therefore, uh, actually, uh, from this story, I think there are three stories, three take-home messages. Number one is that this is a uh, this is a case report, but uh, again, it uh, goes uh, in agreement with the existing evidence that vitamin C early and uh, sufficient dose of vitamin C oral and uh, intravenously can help a patient to cope with severe uh, viral infection. That's the first message. The second is that vitamin C in this case uh, probably helped the family members, five of them, from getting the viral infection. None of them, the five uh, you know, got the infection. Um, and the third is that a clinical trial is a strong and powerful message which makes other doctors feel uh, 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 emboldened. Uh, they are able to, they feel more brave to try this thing because other people are doing the same. So it is all important for us to disseminate the message to other people in this critical time of the uh, in history, that uh, vitamin C is very safe. Again, 
NIH has official documents showing that the vitamin C at high doses, how high, 100 grams, 90 grams, basically up to 1 to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. So for somebody who is 120 pounds, 150 pounds, uh, 160 kilogram, which is what, 140 pounds, that's like a Chinese size, you know, a person, which is about 90 grams. For an American, 200 pounds, that's even higher. Okay, it's very safe. Very safe to use even at a dose of higher than 100 grams of vitamin C. And for th that's usually for the cancer treatment. But for viral infection, usually we don't have to go that far. Okay, 50 grams ish, 60, 30, in that range, that's usually good enough, you know, of course, individualized. So vitamin C is very safe and uh, it doesn't, doesn't do significant side effects to you and also it can kill virus, it can protect you from uh, further damage, it can help you to repair the existing damage. Vitamin C actually has a lot of other uh, benefits for chronic diseases, which actually that's why I'm uh, very interesting because you know I'm not a acute disease guy. I'm I'm uh, I'm more interested in chronic disease management of, in diabetes, uh, hyperlipidemia, the metabolic syndrome, and the coronary artery disease. You know, as you can see, I'm getting old. I have some <laughs> these graying hair on my sides, so I'm more interested in how we can manage and slow down and, and treat and prevent the chronic diseases. But vitamin C also has a very powerful, very powerful effects in acute disease like what we have right now, okay? And that's what I want to tell you. So basically again, vitamin C is able to kill virus. Vitamin C can help to uh, manage, can help us to deal with uh, acute uh, uh, respiratory syndrome like uh, the one we have and also a, po a positive message like this we need to tell people and uh, use it because there's really not much uh, there's a whole lot to gain not much to lose all right okay thank you very much until next time uh, oh by the way before i go off and and also uh, this message is uh, is getting across the board uh, to a lot of people and uh, we know in china many uh, doctors are for, uh, uh, are uh, going to Wuhan to help. For example, I'm in Shanghai and a lot of the doctors are really uh, kudos to them and uh, and they are very bravery, okay. They are going to Wuhan to help, uh, you know, because these people go there working very hard, okay, in the danger zone, in the hot zone. And well, the good news encouraging to me is many of them, uh, the ones I know, they pack vitamin C in their suitcase. They pack a lot of them, okay. You know what they pack? They, they pack those diapers, they pack vitamin C and these things. And recently I know one of my, uh, the sister of one of my uh, friends, and she is going to have very soon. So I shipped, I, I helped a little bit of what I can. I shipped some vitamin C to, to her so that she can help her, uh, that, that vitamin C can help her. And I'm fully confident that vitamin C is powerful, is, is great. And uh, this time around, more and more people will know about vitamin C. So let's act right now. Let's not to wait until that magic vitamin, I mean, vaccine and antiviral drug comes around. Okay, before that, all we have to do is the standard support care uh, and also vitamin C. All right, go vitamin C. Yeah. <laughs>